Welcome to the Masters of Engineering podcast. Cool products, the people who develop them and how they do it. I'm your host, John Hirschtick. I've spent my entire life building CAD and PDM systems. But the best part of my job, it's not the software that I help build. It's the people I meet who are among the most innovative, interesting, coolest product developers on the planet. And in my podcast, you get to meet these cool people too. A very special guest today. It's the world famous Too Tall Toby. Okay. And Toby has been a 3D CAD user, instructor, and enthusiast for over 20 years. He's fielded personally over 10 thousand technical support cases. So some of you listeners have asked support questions and, and Toby's answered them. He's instructed over 200 pro training classes and he's uh, rank, reached a rank of certified expert. But what's really cool is most recently he's got this incredible YouTube channel, Too Tall Toby, which he's known worldwide for speed modeling. And you might say, what's he doing on the podcast? Well, he, he hasn't built a product. Well, I think he has built a product. In my opinion, he's built some of the world's best knowledge, community, and um, entertainment for the product developers of the world through his, his videos. And he's introduced it through the idea and culture of gamification of CAD, the 3D CAD. Too Tall Toby, welcome to the podcast. Wow, thank you, John, so much for that intro. Uh, that was very kind of you. I'm a huge fan, huge fan of you, huge fan of the podcast, and uh, very honored to be here with you today. Well, thank you, because, you know, one thing I'll start out is it's great to see someone who's so enthusiastic about CAD. Like, sometimes I think, like, I've devoted my life to it. And, I mean, 20 years ago, people were telling me, well, CAD's a solved problem. What else are you going to do? I'm like, CAD's not a solved problem. You know, and do you agree with that? It's not a solved problem. Yeah, I mean, 100% agree. Uh, there's every day we're seeing new technologies coming out, uh, new ways of uh, hosting the CAD platform itself, uh, new technologies for helping engineers go from point A to point B. And now, of course, with these uh, new, newer developments in AI, we're seeing more and more of that kind of what's your problem? You know, just type it in uh -huh. in plain English and uh, yeah. let the AIs go through and maybe give you a solution. Not quite there yet, but I can, mm -hmm. uh, can kind of see the writing on the wall. Well, I'm seeing that come up more often in my own customer meetings. So I can think of two customers I met with recently that both are using generative design, not, not in a hands-off way, like, oh, computer, go design it, but in a way to give them insight. And they use generative design um, in conjunction with traditional methods to produce some really cool, um, uh, really cool products. Hey, for those in our audience who are unfamiliar, what is speed modeling? Well, I think that uh, the simplest explanation of that would be, I would show you a 2D print and I would say, John, mm -hmm. turn this into a 3D model, go. And I would uh, hit the stopwatch and I would ask you to turn it into a 3D model. And it would have to be accurate. You know, you can't just draw whatever you think you see. It has to be accurate because in the real world, if you create something and there's a dimension wrong, well, you're gonna cost the company money. You're gonna make bad mm -hmm. parts. So uh, the requirement is that it has to be done as quickly as possible, but it has to be accurate. And so the yeah. challenge is that you haven't seen this print before. You know, this is the very first time you're seeing this print. And so you have to use all the skills that you have acquired over the years and uh, try to figure out the shortest way from point A to point B, turning that 2D print into an accurate 3D model. Yeah. And what... Um... Uh, what do you think is the key benefit of people doing speed modeling competitions? A lot of times I think of it like um, playing scales. You can see I got a couple of guitars behind me. Uh, uh -huh. A large portion of my life playing music. And uh, I think it's a lot like playing scales or, or you know, uh, more, you know, uh, a wider explanation might be to say it's practicing fundamentals. You know, when you uh -huh. go through and you challenge yourself to create a model from a 2D print, and you do it once and then you try it again and try to better your time and you try it again and try to better your time. Well, inevitably, you're going to find things that you could have done more efficiently the first time around. And that's really the skill that I'm hoping to teach the users and the product developers out there is how to use your toolkit as efficiently as possible. You know, regardless of what CAD system you're using, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of different tools at your disposal. And a true master is going to be able to look at that entire toolkit and say, this is the tool I need for this job right now. 
And I think mm -hmm. that's hopefully what you're going to learn from speed modeling. Oh, that's great. And I, when I watch some of your content and I watched a speed modeling championship, we're going to get to that world championship. I thought of that. I thought, hey, this is about people. It seems you, you attract an audience of people who, who know their CAD, but want to get better, are seeking to get better. And that's really a, a cool thing. And I want to thank you. It's a service you're doing to the whole community, raises people's skill level. Yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest payoffs that I get is uh, one of the playlists that I that I offer. Um, it's got about 50 challenges in it right now. It's uh, it's the same formula over and over and over again. Here's a 2D print with a mm. clock superimposed on the screen. And your challenge mm. is to take that 2D print to turn it into a 3D model. And then I want you to go down into the comments and put in a comment that says how long it took you. And at the very end of the video, the correct answer will be shown. You can make sure that you got it right. Well, yeah. what I get to see over time are the metrics of the same user who maybe averaged 10 minutes to complete that challenge. But over time, that 10 minutes goes down to nine minutes, goes down to eight minutes, goes down to seven minutes. And I can see, you know, almost in real time, you know, over the course of uh, 12 months, 18 months, I can see how that one user is getting better and better and better and how they are developing their skills. You know, they'll say, hey, I, uh -huh. I never used RIB yeah. before. Thanks, for, thanks right, for including right. rib in this challenge. I never used that before. Right. Now I'm starting to use that and I can see all these other places that I can use it in my actual job. Hmm. No, that is that is really great because there are a lot. I always say, you know, CAD is partly about the functions that are there, but it's often about technique, right? And there's so many different ways to model a part. Right. That's yeah, I mean, I've seen. every every year the the cha the 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 channel kind of has a crescendo at the end of the year uh, where we get all of these users who have been doing these challenges throughout the year. We get them all together and we say we're going to have a speed modeling tournament and yeah. the users are kind enough to share their screen. And so I'll take two users and put them side by side and oh, yeah. they will share their screen and I'll say, ready, guys, here we go. Three, two, one, go. And I show them the print at the same time. And they begin modeling. And it's so fascinating how two different users can take a completely different approach to the same yeah. challenge. Yeah. You know, they'll start, one will start on the top plane, one will start on the front plane. One will draw kind of the main footprint. One will draw the two cylindrical bosses. You know, one will use a lot of layout sketch geometry. The other will go fe feature by feature. But uh -huh. a lot of times, even when they use those very different approaches, they finish within seconds of one another. And that's when it gets really exciting. That is really interesting. It shows people's brains optimized to some degree, even if you don't see it. And by the way, it was watching. I had known about your content before and you before. And we met many years ago in the SolidWorks era when I was at SolidWorks. Um, but I had not, I, I really hadn't thought of having you on the podcast till I watched, uh, I watched some rounds of the speed modeling championships. And I thought, this is so cool. And that's when I realized, hey, you you do have a product because my I'm supposed to be interviewing product developers. Now you'd qualify anyway because I can I can do whatever I want. This <laughs> podcast is, you know, well, it's, not, in, it's a fun in, thing, you know. But in watching that tournament, what did you think about that tournament that was that was so appealing or so exciting? So the first thing that was appealing was, of course, just that it's interesting to see a speed modeling tournament, just like. Back in the days of, of SolidWorks, in the SolidWorks worlds of old, I'm going to say 25 years ago, this model mania thing started. Joe Dunn, I think, uh, led that. And uh, uh, it was just fun. You know, people like doing it. It's interesting. It takes a skill that's associated with professional and engages it. But the other thing I thought was so cool about your tournament was the media and culture that you built around it. You know, you it was so cool to me to see a subject like CAD that's that's very associated with professional tied into this streaming gaming kind of culture you have with your platform, your graphics and design, and the way you speak is just so cool. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, so I was struck by the, not only the, the structure, you could have had a very formal speed model. Well, it could have been like an SAT exam. Well, open your booklets to page one. <laughs> and, you know, instead it's like this casual, cool thing. Almost like I watch, I have six kids and step kids, by the way. And some are really into video game streaming. And clearly that's rubbed off on, on what you're doing. So that's what, what I saw was two things, the speed modeling, which was awesome. And then I was struck by the design of your experience. And let me ask you, did you design the experience deliberately or was it just the way it just fell to hand as you put together the web page and the videos? 
Well, I mean, when you when you use the phrase the experience, are you referring to kind of the overall like theme of the channel or what yeah. maybe you can elaborate what you mean by Well, experience? I mean, I mean the look of the graphics, the way you do videos is a style I think of like streaming gaming. Okay, that's what my see my, one of my children does a lot of gaming streaming where they'll play games and so you're there to talk and narrate, but people see it and you're using what looks to me to be like a, a gaming streaming platform. And your slides that you clearly have prepared for the episodes in PowerPoint, you have a very distinctive design. It's, it looks unlike things that you'd associate. Like back in your career at a SolidWorks bar, go back, whatever, 20 years ago, I'm guessing you would not have used the same color schemes, fonts, <laughs> and designs. You're laughing because it's kind of obvious. Right. But I find that interesting. So you've taken a pro subject and sort of intersected it with this kind of funky next gen gaming streaming vibe the, to me now i'm an old guy and you know that's kind of how i see it but i'm wondering was that deliberate or did it so were those designs real choices or is that just you said hey i'm going to start my, my yeah channel. i mean i think that's that's always what we try to do as artists right we look at all of yeah. our different influences and and we try to find a good blend of all of those influences you know so i'm pulling influences in this case from you know from this the just synth wave which is just the kind of music that i will synth often wave. listen to when i'm trying to do cad you know i'll uh, something will catch my eye it'll probably look like an old um anime or japanese animation movie that that's what the thumbnail usually is it'll see that i'll click it'll say like retro wave synth wave and i'll click on it and i'll be like oh yeah this mm -hmm. is gonna let me stay focused i'm like because as a musician it's funny like if I listen to like 60s and 70s rock, that's probably one of my favorite genres to listen to. I get very distracted by the the parts of the song. I'm like, oh, I hear that bass player too. doing. Yeah. Me too. Oh, I like that harmony yeah. there. That was well, good. Wow, I'm not a musician, boring. but I get distracted by the lyrics. Even yeah, if I'm not lyrics. listening to lyrics, right. I think what happens is if even, you know, something my wife will say to me, oh, what do you think of the lyrics? I'm like, I haven't listened to one word of it. But it still distracts me because there's part of my brain that hears, oh, that's language. I have to decode it, I think. And I like no language. So I'm a big fan. My yep. tune, my zone into work playlist is like um, Pure Focus on Apple Music is my okay. favorite. And also there's some things on Tidal that are interesting. But I've never tried the synth way, so I'm going to give it a try. Okay. But, yeah. But so know. it was just, it was just as an artist, it's interesting you use the word artist. So you are an artist. And I think it's cool. Can I ask you, does your style appeal more to younger developers or is it across the age range? Yeah, no, I mean, I think cool knows cool, right? So okay. it, it appeals to cool people. All right. So anyone, because I personally, I want to say that I think what you're doing is a trendsetter. I think that more content in our world is going to look more like what you're doing than 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 look like the kind of stayed pro you know like the, you know again the way a solidworks var would have done training 25 years ago looked one way and the way you do it uh, it's not just moving it to the web it's also rethinking the design and artistry of what will reach people in the era of video and streaming and gaming and all that. Oh, okay. A lot of topics. I'm going to, I, I have a feeling we're going to do some kind of podcasting again together. I, I would love podcast, that. My podcast. I would love it. Yeah. You but, come on my show sometime. Oh, It'd be great. We usually, love to, stream, anyway. we usually stream right now at nine o'clock on Monday nights, but I, I, tell know. You, I think that is a bust of a time slot. I, I'm not liking this time slot oh, at yeah. all. Okay. Yeah. And I try to be aware of the different time zones around the world because yeah. we are a global outfit but man this yeah. nine o'clock time slot if there's one thing i've learned uh maybe avoid the nine o'clock p.m east coast time slot okay because that we'll time slot is that. a total bust yeah i so. saw you had you had had all this on last week um i want you to know oh, in a great. in a shameless ploy to curry favor with you and perhaps er, work my way into the two tall toby video i want <laughs> you to know that that I came today with a surprise for those who are on video, they can see now that I will reveal that I'm actually wearing oh, oh yeah, a two tall Toby t shirt. Yeah, yeah, okay, James. come on, I come like on. It. I, I, I have it. I'm, I'm flying the, the, I'm flying the, the team uh, colors here for two yes. tall Toby. And so now, how I want is that shirt. Know, Oh, it's a great shirt. I yeah. love it. I I'm love so it. happy I, with this vendor. I am so happy uh, with these shirts. You know, it's a great shirt. It fits great. And, um, yeah, I looked at myself this morning. I said, I should wear this more often. No, I wouldn't look normally great. wear a T-shirt to great. work. 
Yep. Well, of course, anyone looks great in a too tall Toby T-shirt. <laughs> you know, anyone. Well, thank and you. I'm, so, I'm honored uh, to have you wearing that. Anyway, I'm just yeah, I'm excited to have it, and um, I thought I'd wear it today to show my my spirit. So, um, uh, tell me, I, I I love listening to your commentary. Do you get kind of a rush doing this when you're like you're essentially like the play-by-play broadcaster of a sport? Does it give you like an adrenaline rush? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's one of these things where the way that that my life uh, and my uh, presentation style has always been has been the majority of the work happens before we go live, you know, and that ah. way when once we go live, it's like I can kind of sit back and relax. Now the tournament, I'm doing a lot of the production while I'm doing the commentary, so I still have to be a little bit more mm. on edge. But for the most yeah. part, once the thing gets rolling and once, you know, once the competitors are going, it's nice because I get to actually kind of sit back and I get to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, that I'm very enthusiastic about. What sport, you know, like what sport do you think would most closely match these kinds of competitions? If you had oh, to just man. say just whatever one comes to mind, first one, like what would you think of as a sport? I'll think of one, too. Yeah, I mean, it's one versus one, right? So it's one versus got, one. Yeah. So you got like chess, you've got uh, tennis, you've got table tennis, you know, anything that's one versus one. I'd say a lot of times what I talk about is the idea of luck and how luck still factors mm. into this, even though it is a skills yeah. competition, there's still an element yeah. of luck. I think that in the in terms of chess, that gets mitigated a lot, like that overbalances on skill. Um, and I think that, you know, with tennis, it's kind of the same thing, but there's a lot more of a luck element, especially when you're playing outdoors. So yeah. I think that, you know, in the case of this, this, uh, structure, the luck comes from whether or not you've seen a similar scenario to the challenge that I'm giving you when I see. the drawing yeah. comes out. Yeah. So it may be yeah. something like, you know, the, the, it's usually random. The, you know, I have a collection of drawings that I've made, but then I randomize with, uh, uh, I randomize which drawing gets shown at which time. And so uh -huh. the runner, you know, maybe he happened to work in an industry that makes parts that are very similar to that bracket. Oh, yeah. And you so, call them runners, right? Yeah. So That's the runners, what, that, yeah. that I picked up in your in your the, lingo right yeah the runner the competitor yep the runner the runner is, is, yeah so uh, running i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's like track and field because you're just field. trying to finish faster yep you know that's how i think of running um yeah. uh tell me a little about your career background how did you first get into cad and when did you say to yourself i am a cad i'm gonna i use the term cad fanatic i'm a cad fanatic you I think you're one <laughs> yeah what got you into it when did you realize it was you know your thing I mean, when I was in um, trade school, you know, I was able to get out of trade school, get into a co-op uh, doing 2D CAD. And I remember very, I, I, you know, crystal clear, I have this memory where I leveraged the 2D CAD beyond what its capability should have been and created uh -huh. a 3D model. And I was so happy about it. I worked on it for a long time because uh, I was really pushing the limits of what the software supposedly could do. And so I took it into my boss and he was like a little bit of an old timer. And he said, yep. you're wasting time. We're never going to do 3D here. And I was, you know, like, oh, sad, so <sighs> sad, or like heartbroken and and uh, walked back to my desk with my head down. And the next week he retired. And so oh. there was part of me that was like, why did you, why couldn't you just have waited and not said that to me? Why did you yeah. have to break my heart when you knew you were yeah. on your way out the door? But uh, his replacement came in and uh, said, hey, we should check out this 3D CAD stuff. Uh, this thing solid works. You should go and check this out. And so got to go to uh, a SolidWorks uh, presentation, you know, the, the what's new presentation, got to ask the reseller a lot of questions at the presentation. Uh -huh. I was very enthusiastic, very, you know, like, wait, what can you do here? What about this? What would you do in this scenario? That kind of got me on their radar, uh, did the training with them as well, and uh, eventually got a job offer from the reseller. And that got me into doing tech support and training. And, um, you know, I love it. I just love it. I love the idea. I love the idea that as humans, you know, we can speak to one another. And what that means is that there could be something that exists in my head uh, that I can imagine that I can visualize and I can transfer that to you just through words. And I think that's a, you know, it's a true mm -hmm. miracle of what it means to be human, it but is. it also manifests itself in a payout where when you see a student and the gears click into place and they're like, yep. Oh, like, there's such yeah. a, a beautiful, almost an esoteric uh, transfer of energy there that really, really, you know, it fulfills me. And that's so well said. It gave me that yeah. sense of purpose, you know, and it gave me yeah. that sense of purpose year over year over year. And so 
Yeah. Uh, I was very happy to be able to do it in that role. And I'm very happy to feel like I'm continuing it in the role that I'm in now. I can relate because I, I spent a little time before I, early in my career, I taught night school to draftsmen and machinists. I taught them how to use CAD at the time, 2D computer vision CADs for, nice. and it was so hard for them. And I thought, oh my gosh, these systems, because I had built some CAD software and I'm like, we need to do better. And I've spent 40 more years trying to do better. Um, back to you. Um, <laughs> and succeeded. Uh, it's it's well, funny you bring up you know, computer yeah. vision because, yeah. you know, the way the tournament works and the way my channel works is that it is CAD agnostic. It's like all yeah. are welcome. If you do CAD, you're welcome here. You know, 3D CAD. Yeah. I guess I sort of do have a, a little bit of a cutoff for, uh, sorry about the yeah. guys out there, but 3D yeah. all are welcome. And so we, we saw some runners this year during the tournament that were bringing up some old school stuff. Key creator. The evolution yeah. of CAD key, like I didn't even know CAD key was still a thing at all, but key oh, creator yeah. is still out there kicking. We got That's an wrong. Alibre guy who's hitting up the leaderboards every month. You know, we got people yeah. using all kinds of, a Katia guy entered. We got people using yeah. all kinds of different CAD yeah. and it's so cool to be able to see the different CAD systems, but it's, it especially makes me smile when I see something that I think is a little bit of an outsider. You know, I yeah, always you have some that. old stuff. Yeah, and I always well, CAD's got a lot of old systems. So. I mean, we're probably yeah. the youngest system in the industry right now in pro systems with Onshape. By the way, I was hugely excited to see Onshape win the world's speed modeling champions. It's not why you're here, but that was really cool. I mean, it's worth it, talking yeah. about, you know, we started out with 32 people from yeah. 11 different countries. Uh, and I think there were six different CAD systems that were being represented and they had to go through these different, you know, these different tournament challenges that were happening every Saturday, different runners would go every Saturday yeah. until ultimately we came down to our final four. It was one on shape user and three SolidWorks users. And uh, yeah. that on-shape user was able to go through and to defeat yeah. all the other runners, come out on top, hold up the trophy. Yeah. And uh, it was all incredible. This, and yeah, yeah a all testament to, yeah. yeah, I know we're not, you know, I'm not trying yeah. to, to no. blow smoke or anything, but a true yeah. testament to a CAD software that exists entirely in the cloud that you can yeah. just go to a browser and start using. And uh, man, it's it's so impressive. And it was so cool. You know, we, it's just such a, a cool event to have different users from different CAD systems. You know, it's almost like a wizard's battle. Like you're saying, what sport is it the most like? That's That yeah. should have been my answer. The sport that oh. it's the most like is a wizard's battle. And, a wizard's uh, battle. Okay. A wizard's battle, yeah. Because I would always, when I was teaching classes and when I was doing tech support, people would ask me, you know, hey, you're a CAD expert. What do you think is the best CAD system out there? And I'd say, honestly, they all have their pros and cons, but it's really more about the wizard than the wand. And uh, yeah, it I, is right. When I right, would say that, sure. and then of course the next thought in my head was, you know what? Someday we should have a wizards battle. And so <laughs> I'm very honored to have had 32 wizards from around the world yeah. get together, battle, and have uh, one wizard up top wielding the wand of on shape. Well, yeah, I was I was really honored, and you know we have we have a lot of power on shape, and it's nice to see that being shown. Back to you earlier in your career, you worked in tech support over 10,000. A lot of cases, though. You must have learned a lot. What were the most common? And I, I, by the way, I used to study this and I still do. And I've seen enormous swing over the years. But what are the most common things you saw in support? Like, oh, I mean, problems? over a sample size of 10,000 cases, you know, yeah. there's going to be a pretty wide variety. Sure. Yeah. What did you learn doing support? That was the interesting. Well, I think that the biggest things I learned would be uh, you really have to understand how to leverage a knowledge base. So as a CAD uh -huh. company developer uh, like yourself, you know, that's something that you want to make sure that is easily searchable. Uh, it can really help people figure out their own challenges without needing to make a, a phone call to tech support. They can if they can search a knowledge base, the knowledge base is yep. what we used a lot uh, to, to help solve issues. Um, you know, understanding some basics of how a computer works, you know, those were really common, really common cases, like everything's yeah. going so slow. When's the last time you, you know, completely cleared your cache? What do you mean? When, when did you last reboot? You know, when did you last completely shut down, clear everything out? Cause you might just have a bunch of stuff stuck in the cache that you, you don't even know what it is. Just clear everything, yeah. restart and see if things go back. You know, and, you know, it was it was rarely like, oh, I restarted this morning. It was usually like, oh, I never restart this thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, 
Okay. Maybe start there. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, yeah, I remember also back when I was close to this in my at SolidWorks, you know, like half the stuff was about dealing with the computer and the device driver and the install and the license code and whatever and getting it just to kind of tune up right. Yeah. Right. Um but it's uh, a lot of cool cases yeah. too, a lot of cool questions that are you know, thinking outside the box and, and how can you mm. solve this one? I remember one of my, you know, one of my favorite lessons from doing tech support was when a customer asked about doing a, a pattern on a pipe flange, but um, instead of doing the pattern like around a circle, they wanted it to radiate outward. So they had a, a circular groove mm. that was going around in a circle and they wanted the diameter of that groove to increase, the diameter of the path to increase. And oh, so, you know, I was able to figure out a way to do it using uh two different options that were in the software in combination in a way that like I had never seen anybody use them, but oh, I just cool. thought to myself like, Hmm, let's try this, you know? And those are always my favorite kinds of cases when we're, we're skirting a little bit of kind of the limitations of the software and, and figuring okay. out clever workarounds that ultimately yeah. help the customer. Um, Hey, uh, I'm dying to ask you two. To I'm going to hop around different topics. It's all good. Too tall, Toby. Uh, um, now I think you already told me in our preparation, you're not going to say exactly how tall you are. Is that right? I mean, I'm pretty tall, you know, I'm tall enough okay. that like, uh, I've hit my head on stuff that, you know, normal people wouldn't hit their head on, you know, okay. plenty of, That's uh, tall. hanging lights, uh, the, uh, those real heavy duty cast door closers. You know, I've hit my Ooh. head on a couple of those. They're the worst. Yeah, they don't give at all. Like, at least it's it's a bummer when you break somebody else's chandelier, but at least it, it gives a little bit. Okay. Uh, so you never want to hit really anything tall. that doesn't give at all. And and what does it mean to be too tall? Too tall for what? Uh, you know, airplanes, uh, okay. certain cars. Like the car that I currently own, I I it was the only one on the lot that I was able to sit in comfortably without hitting my head on the roof. Ooh. So could yeah. I ask you yeah. which kind of car you own that has that extra headroom? Uh, I don't, I don't, I'll tell you offline. Okay, offline. Got it. Got it. We don't need to know. But because I'm interested too, because I'm I'm considered tall in okay. my family. Too I have tall. a lot of tall people in my family. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think too tall is re relative. Um, yeah. Hey, um, speed modeling. It's you're you're, you know, this is is it relevant for the professional world? My audience is it could be anyone, students or whatever. But I aim at pros. How is it relevant to the professional world? I think I know, but but tell us. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the sometimes I get pushback on this, you know, on forums. Yeah. I'll post something. How fast can you model this? And then the response will be like a grumpy old man, you know, like, oh, it's, you're it's going to be a garbage model if you do it fast. It's going to be a garbage. It teaches it, bad habits. It teaches right. bad habits. Yeah. And a lot. what I often think of is uh, I have an electrician friend. And so I will... Uh, I will attempt to run the electrical before he comes over, you know, and then this is like mm -hmm. hours and hours of me measuring things and cutting yeah. things and like, you know, da, 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 da. and then he'll come over and he'll be like, why did you, this is no, this is not right. And he'll, he'll show me how to do it the right way. And he'll do it in minutes, you know, and he'll use like one tool. He's that. like a flathead screwdriver to strip I the wire and to that. do everything. Uh, just one tool. About electricians. Yeah. yeah. And so, so much faster. And, you, and he's, he finishes and it looks beautiful, right? Now, did he sacrifice any quality? No. no. Did he speed run that project? Absolutely. You know, compared to yeah. me, the beginner, the novice. And so I think it's just skills development. I think it's, you know, you teach people that time is money. You teach people the value of, you know, I've been in spots. I'm sure you've been in spots where I need to get this model out to the shop floor before 4 p.m. on Friday. So that they can start running it so the machines yep. can be running over the weekend. Absolutely. If four yeah, o'clock comes, me, yeah. they're gone. That's it. It's, so, and it's gonna sit let, all weekend. Yeah. That brings a question to me. So do you think I have an opinion on this, but in today's world versus the world of five years ago, are there more is do people have more or less time to get work done? Man, that's uh you're probably asking the wrong person. Like okay. I, I told you before stream, I'm uh I'm at a point now in my life where I just feel like every moment is like I'm peaking, I'm having like a yeah. beautiful existence, yeah. uh, oh, and I'm no. embracing every moment. And so I don't know. I don't know what if a lot of people I think it's a lot of perception. There's a lot of perception in that question. You know, do people oh. perceive that they have more time or no? I mean like deadlines. Or... I feel like time constants have shortened. Like like what used to be like, well, we'll prototype that on Friday. Well, now it's today, you know, mm. or it used to be, we'll send that out to the machinist and we'll use FedEx. So it gets there fast. Well, no one used FedEx. They'd email it. Well, no, now they don't even want to use email. We have a Slack channel with the machine. Right. You know? It's like, 
what used to be weeks go to days and what used to be days go to hours. You know, everything, it's like, like things operate at a higher clock rate, I think. So speed is, by the way, that old codger says, well, the model won't be high quality. Well, the next day when he needs a model from the engineer, it needs to be done by 4 p.m. for the machine shop so he can hit a deadline. He's going to be darn happy that his engineer models fast. So, yeah, and I um, think that it, it, it yields, you know, I think that the real trick in all of this is to realize that you don't have to sacrifice quality when you're doing a job quickly. Like you can be efficient yeah. with the toolkit that you have available to you. It that is just like your, your electrician example is perfect. Right. And that was my, I got out of the business. I, I install home automation light switches and stuff in my house. I used to do it myself. And then about, I don't know, 15 years ago, I discovered my electrician does it like 10 times faster and he's a pro and I don't want to, mm -hmm. it's not a hobby anymore. And he's amazing. He comes over, he does it so literally 10 times faster. Um, hey, how does the audience, the audience might be wondering, how do I enter the speed modeling competition? What should they do? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're asking. I mean, the, the way that the channel is structured is that we do a live stream on Mondays. I mentioned it before, 9 p.m. right now. We'll see if it changes okay. later. Mondays, the, 9 p.m. That's the, 9 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. East, we have East Coast U.S. Yeah, not exactly East a fun US time Mondays, slot. Mondays, 9 p.m. The, na the name of that live stream. hours. Yeah, the name of that live stream is Model Monday Live. And what we do during that live stream is I show the chat a 2D print. And I say, everybody who's in the chat right now, you can practice. You can see who's the fastest in the chat. Turn this into a 3D model. Calculate mm -hmm. the mass and put that mass in the chat. And the first person who gets it right in the chat is the winner. Now, okay. beyond that, um, I also do a monthly speed run challenge. It's structured a little bit differently than the Model Monday live challenges. Okay. But uh, what happens with that, that leaderboard challenge is that you have to create three models and you can do it. Uh, as many times as you want. And then when you feel like you're ready, when you feel like you've got the optimal strategy, you record yourself doing it. And then you use that to submit your time. I would encourage everybody who's out there who's listening, take a okay. look at tutaltobi.com slash leaderboard. And that's where you can yep. find out. And that will, um, uh, no spoilers, but that will almost certainly pave the way to 11-11-2023, November 11th. November 11. Which is going to be the finals of our next tournament? I think what we're going to do is we're we're going to seed it from that leaderboard. So okay. we're going to get thirty-two so gonna people on that leaderboard, and we're going to use that to seed the tournament. Okay. But the person who got the shortest time on the leaderboard is going to go against the person who got the longest time. We're going to do it tournament I got seed it. style. I think what you're doing is so cool. So I think you're a trendsetter. We're going to see more pro content coming along in styles, not your exact style, but styles like yours, as opposed to the 25 years ago at the SolidWorks dealer style, you know? And what I wanna know is, do you feel that way? Do you think we're gonna see more pro audience content in your gamified? You you're, you have the term 3D, gamification of 3D cat. Is that a style that's gonna catch on with more pro content? It's always the, the reason I hesitate to answer that question is because we're talking about a niche within a niche. And so okay. how much is going to catch on, you know, we'll see. I like it. I think it's awesome. You like it. You think it's awesome. You yeah. and me both are wearing the same shirt. We're obviously a lot alike, you know, but how many other people are out there that are like us? You know, it's always going to be a niche within a niche. And so I think it's going to get bigger and bigger. And I think people are going to realize that, you know, this is a great way to communicate with people uh, and to build community. And so, you know, we're always going to have our community. How big it's going to get, I don't know. I mean, I try to be realistic. We're talking about, you know, spending a Saturday morning watching people compete against one another on screens where they're building a 3D CAD model. I'm not sure how many people are going to be that into that, but I hope that it grows because I well, think that the goal yeah. is to, to create educational content that is consumable. And I think this is a great way to do that. Well, that's great. And and I think if you if you're making something that I'm guessing you're making something that you yourself would enjoy watching. That's the just trick. like you make music that you want to listen yeah. to. And if you do, if you stay true to that, Toby, I think you're going to continue to succeed. I want to close by asking you one other thing. Just you must someone who uses CAD so much, you must design and build things too, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. So what are some things that you that you've designed and built that you can tell our audience about? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, with uh, not only with 3D CAD, but with 3D printing, uh, it's yep. basically anytime I see something that I need, um, I could, you know, go and I could buy it or I could just draw it up and 3D print it. And so that's going to be everything from, I mean, one of the more recent things that I did was yeah. I found an old humidifier. It's getting dry, getting to be the dry season and uh -huh. the nozzle was missing. And so, you know, instead of trying to find that part and find that manufacturer, I just figured out essentially what was missing, drew it up, 3D printed it, and then we had a nozzle by the time we went to bed. You know, uh, that is um, that is awesome. Yeah, it's always things <laughs> yeah. like that. I mean, there's always, yeah. you know, there's always uh, that basically like rinse and repeat every project that I do. And, you know, yeah. along the way, I try to uh, incorporate lessons that, that I've learned from watching the speed runners, lessons I learned from, you know, doing all the training and everything and then give some back like this bass guitar that's behind me. You can see it's missing the strings. You can see it's missing the pickup. Oh. If, you're, if you're just listening, there's a bass guitar behind me that's missing the strings yeah. and the pickup. Well, on my channel, I went through and I did a live stream of me taking photographs of that and then turning it into a full 3D CAD model. So start oh, to finish. People always that. ask that. How do you make guitar? How do yeah. you make strings? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do the wiring? Well, I just did it all. I just did it all and I live streamed it and put it up as like free cool. training. People want to learn how to do it. They can just watch those videos and they know how to do it themselves. Let me just say um, what a pleasure it is to get to know you better. Thank you for being here today. And thank you for what you're doing for the community. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. I that's want to a, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now you're doing something awesome, Toby. And and um, I hope that we are together again and I, I just keep doing it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And if, if you're out there okay. listening and you want to join, you know, all are welcome. It does not matter what CAD system you're using. Everybody is welcome in our community. And uh, it's all about just kind of community skill building, networking and uh, helping, you know, teach people different ways to approach models. It, it, everyone should do it because I'm going to tell you, Toby, correct me if I'm wrong. There is not a single person out there who uses CAD, no matter how skilled you are, who can't develop your skills further, who can't take it to the next level. And Too Tall Toby is the place to be to take those skills further. You can learn more, again, about Too Tall Toby at TooTallToby.com or go to YouTube and look at Too Tall Toby, T-O-O-T-A-L-L-T-O-B-Y. Um, and for those of you, if you like Masters of Engineering, my podcast, you can listen to other episodes or subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Or you can watch on video. My last five to 10 episodes have been on video on YouTube. And we love hearing what you think. So make sure you leave a review and tell me what you thought of Toby and a story. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Jay Hirschtick, J-H-I-R-S-C-H-T-I-C-K. Thank you again, Toby. That's it for today. See you all next time on Masters of Engineering. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.